All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another collaboration beer, this time between Hot Butcher for the World and the Half Acre Beer Company, both of which are out of Chicago, Illinois, and this is their IPA Your Way. So they're calling this one a Citra, Simcoe, and Amarillo hopped IPA with Phantasm. Comes in at 7% alcohol by volume. No IBUs list in time of review. This can is just over one month old. And I'm going to give a huge thanks. Shout out once again to Hot Butcher for hooking me up with this one. So big thanks to them. And I'm really excited about this one. Not only because it's a collaboration between Hot Butcher and Half Acre, which of course Hot Butcher is moving into Half Acre's old digs uh, soon. By the time you see this review, hopefully they're in their new uh, brewery, uh, the old Half Acre um, facility. Uh, if not, soon, they said sometime in 2021. But this is the first beer that I've ever had the pleasure of trying that has Phantasm in it. So when I first saw Phantasm, now here's the thing, my channel's been hi on hiatus for the vast majority of 2021, and Phantasm kind of took off earlier this year when I wasn't doing beer reviews and not really focused on beer. Uh, when I came back to beer and started looking at stuff, I was like, Phantasm, is that a new hop? No, it's not. It's a thiol that um, basically is a chemical compound that's derived from Sauvignon Blanc grapes. And to make a long story short and just get right down to it, Phantasm basically enhances the tropical fruit character in the aroma of beers. That's pretty much what it does. There's a lot of breweries doing uh, adding it to beers and whatnot. And hey, there's so many different like brewing tactics now and, and ingredients uh, breweries use for hop forward beers. You got your lupulin powder and your cryo, and I got Phantasm. It's like it's pretty cool to see uh, how you know how it's evolved over the last five years or so. So many different things, and um, yeah, this is the first one I'm trying now. The citrus, Simcoe, and Amarillo hop thing is that these are old school hops. Now, a lot of people don't think of citrus as an old school hop, but it's been around for 10 plus years. Simcoe and Amarillo way longer. So this is like, is this going to have old school vibes? I didn't look at the tasting notes. You know why? Because I'm not doing that anymore with Hot Butcher beers until the end. Because I don't want to be influenced by their tasting notes, which I was sometimes, even though I didn't think I was. I totally was. It just, you can't, even if you try to ignore it, you can't. Anyway, let's pour this in. So this is a 7% IPA. A lot of their IPAs are typically 6.5 when they do, don't do do collabs. I feel like every time they do a collab, like the ABV is bumped up a half percentage points. Like when they do their double IPAs, they're 8 instead of 7.5. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Anyway, so this doesn't have the crazy haze that like a lot of Hop Butcher beers look like, you know, um, just super light and just murky and like crazy looking. But this is hazy. Has this deep orange color, about a finger of an off-white, really creamy looking head. But yeah, that looks like a hazy IPA. It just doesn't look like a Hop Butcher haze to me. You know, and with those older school hops, maybe they're not going for that. I don't fucking know. Let's get a nose. Oh. Holy shit. Is that the Phantasm or that's just the hops themselves? Because this nose is fucking crazy how intense it is. Holy shit. Wow. Big blast of like pineapple up front. Huge stone fruits, peach, mangoes, apricots, and then underlying like citrus tones, like a huge orange tangelo, like grapefruit tangerine hybrid. Very intense though. Like punch me in the face the first time I, I took a whiff. That piece of shit car outside. Did you guys hear that? Hope you did. I'm getting like uh, a little bit of like a malt character here, like a little bit of almost like a vanilla biscuity type of thing going on. I'm getting a little bit of a. This has Simcoe in it. I wouldn't say it's necessarily catty, but I'm getting a dankness. Um, it doesn't get to that level, but it's definitely dank, and it's like an underlying dankness. Oh, man. This is this is a crazy nose for 7%. I would have to imagine that's a phantasm. And from what I have read, it doesn't really trans over to, translate to the taste. It's more just in the aroma, so... That's kind of disappointing because I would love for this aroma to trans over to translate to the taste because it's fucking crazy. But yeah, it smells great. So you have tropical, you have stone fruits, you have citrus, that underlying dankness, a little bit of that like bready, almost vanilla-like malt character. Yeah, that smells pretty good. Let's get into it. Cheers, everybody, and thanks again to Hot Butcher. Really good beer. What the fuck is that? What is that? I just got hit with a fruit flavor that I was not anticipating in the least. Is that guava? Mm. 
No, it, I, hang on. I've gotten this in a couple beers recently, but it's like a peppery mango skin. Shout out to DJ over at DJ's Brew Tube, good friend of mine, fellow beer tuber. Um, and then there's something else. What the fuck is that? Kiwi? I feel like it's kiwi. I don't know. Anyway, body mouthfeel. Body, this one's like lower side of medium body, 7%. Fine. Mouthfeel, this doesn't have the crazy luscious mouthfeel that Hop Butcher typically has. It's a little bit more crisp, a little bit more spritzy on the palate. So uh, that's fine for what is 7% IPA. Like not every Hop Butcher beer has to be fucking soft, smooth, creamy, and fucking crazy, right? So I'm fine with the body and mouthfeel. It's not mind-blowing, but it's fine. So lower side of medium body, uh, crisp, slightly soft kind of um, mouthfeel. The taste, though, I really like this. I like this a lot. And what I like about it is that it's different. It's old school in some aspects, but new school in others. So right at the front of the palate, I'm going to say generic ci citrus. I'm not going to say, oh, there's an orange and tangerine and tangelo like I did in the nose because it's not. It's generic citrus, and it's like a zesty kind of like citrus so not super sweet or anything and that's right at the tip of the tongue i'm like i'm getting zesty citrus right at the tip of the tongue passes through the palate there's mango a peppery mango skin there's peach there's apricot there's pineapple but it's not it's like under ripened like pineapple it's under ripened peach and apricot the mango is a little bit sweeter but it has that peppery mango skin thing on the finish, though, I get a big blast. I think it's kiwi. I could be wrong. I'm trying to, like, my brain is processing what I'm tasting on the back end, and it's something that is not very, um, excuse me, very uh, common for a tasting note for me or a fruit that I eat. I feel like it's kiwi or something in that realm. Like a kiwi, yeah. Definitely like a kiwi on the back of the palate. There's an underlying slight generic dankness to this one. This one finishes semi-dry with a nice, I would say straight on, I was going to say moderate bitterness, I don't know. We'll say mild. We'll say it's a mild bitterness and more of like a semi-dry to full-on dry finish because it's not too sweet. There's a lot of juicy sweet fruits to this one. I think on the back of the palate, there's a substantial dryness. Yeah, like right now, my the second half of my tongue, like the back end of it, is really fucking dry, which is why I keep on going back for sips. I've said this before a lot of times. I feel like I'm, I'm somebody who doesn't like a really like full-on dry finish. But this would be the beer that I make an exception to because the rest of the flavors, the three-quarters to four-fifths of the way through the palate, is fucking awesome and, and just different. That I don't really care that my palate is really dry right now. Like I could totally use some water or it feels like it, you know. 7%, you can't taste the alcohol. This drink, this drink's like a you know, six to seven percent IPA. The body and the mouth feel a little bit, you know, less than than what it typically is. Uh, which I'm fine with. Um, this is this is really fucking good. Like, this is really good. It's nothing mind-blowing, but I feel like you're using Citrus, Simcoe, and Amarillo. I don't know if that Phantasm is adding anything um, to the taste. Like I said, I don't think that's what it's for. But in the nose, totally. It's not as intense as the nose was, but a lot of it carried over. Probably like 75 to 80% of the intensity of the aroma carried over to the taste. So, really fucking good. Uh not much more to say about it. Really good beer. I like this. Good collab. IPA your way from Hot Butcher and Half Acre. I'm going to go low 4, 2, 5 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.2 out of 5. I think that's a fair score. Uh, I think if the mouthfeel and shit was like, you know, Hot Butcher, probably getting the low 4, 5 range. Uh, but I think what's bumping it into the low 4, 2 range for me, instead of just being like a high 4 or like maybe a straight on 4, is just the uniqueness to this one. Like that kiwi finish and everything going on and that dryness. Like, I don't typically get beers like this that are super sweet with a lot of complexity and then are super dry. Like, more often than not, they finish really sweet. This is a fucking cool beer at 7%. Like, I, I really like this one. Very simplistic label and everything. Oh, yeah, tasting notes. I, I totally forgot until I was going to show you guys the label. Pretty full, cool fucking label. Uh, tasting notes, ripe orange. Okay, I can see that. Like I said, generic, on the tongue, generic zesty citrus fruit at the beginning of the palate. Not necessarily ripe orange, but generic juicy mango yeah for me it was the mango it was juicy it was over it was sweet 
but then it was the peppery mango skin. And then it just says lush tropical, which again, yeah, kiwi, I said pineapple, some stone fruits. So I would say like each tasting note, like I get like 75% of it, like ripe orange, I said zesty, like citrus. Juicy mango, I said more like over ripened mango with some peppery mango skin. Lush tropical, you can really name anything and be right. So I pretty close, but not spot on for me. But yeah, uh, four, two out of five, really good beer. Price and availability, typically these six and a half, seven percent IPAs from Hot Butcher are like, I think they're like 13 bucks a four pack, 14 bucks a four pack, fucking great deal. Like all day, every day. I, I, I'd even pay like 16 to 18 for that. Like it's, it's good. So if, if this was like 13 or 14, a four pack all day. Uh, availability, Hot Butcher. You can get them in Chicago land or now you can get them online at different uh, like craftshack.com. Um, there are some people that uh, that have commented on my videos in the past that say they get them in certain areas. I know they've showed up in Northern Georgia, they've showed up in Pennsylvania and Michigan. So Hot Butcher is a little bit easily more available at this point, uh, considering that like a year ago, like you couldn't, unless you went to the brewery or were in the Chicago, I shouldn't say I went to brewery, unless you're in the Chicago land, you, you couldn't really get their stuff. Now you can. And hopefully when they open their new facility, a lot more people can try it because they make fucking great beer. This is a collab between them and Half Acre and it's fucking really good for what it is. So thanks again to Hot Butcher for sending me, sending me not only this beer, but all the beers. Um, when you see this review, the only beer I haven't reviewed from them yet, excuse me, has been um, their sour triple IP. I forgot it was like a black parrot and orangutan or something like that. I don't know. I say that to the last, even though it's going to be almost a couple months and be like seven weeks old or something like that by the time I drink it. Uh, I'm kind of nervous about that one. But hey, you can't always like everything you get from a brewery. So even though Hot Butcher sends me stuff, I'd be honest with them. And that sour IPA, we'll see. Anyway, sour triple IPA, by the way. Anyway, thanks again to Hot Butcher. Thanks to everybody for stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. To the next one. Cheers.